Welcome to our review video about how to find a moment about a line using vector notation. What we have here is a very quickly rigged planter hanger just using pipes and some pipe brackets to carry a 10 pound planter and the engineer that did this now wants to go back and see what the actual moment she's causing around line AO is where the pipes are attached to the wall. Now for this particular problem, it's just the moment caused by the planter that we care about. We're going to neglect the weight of these quote-unquote weightless pipes just to solve this problem neatly. And what I've already started on the right-hand side of the screen is the free body diagram of this particular system. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is really just figure out where everything's at within our system. So you can see I've already put point A on the free body diagram and instead of drawing the dimensions just cleanly wrote what its coordinates are and that would be 0 in the x, 4 in the y, and 3 in the z as you can see from the picture. Now let's also look where the 4 foot section is at and it's shown with a 60 degree angle from the x axis so we can then see its y value is just 4 sine 60 and its x value is 4 cosine 60. So we're able to define then where that point C exists as 2 in the x, 3.46 in the y, and 0 in the c. We can also then start to define where point B kind of lives, and not only point B, but where if I drop my load down, that the line of action of the load would actually cross the xy plane. And we want to see that since load B is at, or the CB is at 30 degrees, we can get this XY value as 260. And then if we do define the point D as where the line of action crosses the XY plane, we can then see that the total Y value of point D would just be 6.6 .6 times cosine 30 degrees, that's 5.71, and the 30 degrees is from the y-axis, and our x value would be 6.6 .6 sine of 30 degrees, and so we could then define our total point D as 3.3 feet, 5.71 feet, and 0 feet. So just pause for a moment and take a look at that. Again, since B rises up 30 degrees from the XY plane, if we just drop a line from B, which is the line of action of our force, point D is where that line of action would just cross the XY plane. So we can get an XY coordinate, and since we're crossing the XY plane, the Z coordinate of point D has to be zero. If you need to, rewind this, and watch that all again and just make sure you understand the geometry. Once you have the geometry down, remember we're trying to find the moment about line OA or AO. I'm going to change that to OA and that is the dot product of the unit vector of that line OA dotted with the cross product of R cross F. So let's first talk about this unit vector and the unit vector for the line is nothing more than the position vector of the line divided by the magnitude of the position vector. And we'll draw that over on the free body diagram so you can see where that unit vector is going to live. It goes from O to A, so you can either write that as lambda OA or you can write that as lambda A over O to remind us that we subtract the O values from the A values, however you want to do that. Now, we then can write out what our unit vector is going to be. We'd have basically point A minus point O, so we're going to have 0i, 4j, 3k. We divide by the magnitude 4 squared plus 3 squared, which just becomes 5, square root of that. And we're going to get 0.8j plus 0.6k, and that's our unit vector. Now we have to find this r that we're going to cross with f. In this case, remember, R always goes from the point that we want to know the moment about to any point 
on our forces line of action. Now in this case, it's not just a point we want the moment about, but it's a line, so we can pick any point on the line. Makes our lives easier. Since we now know where point D is at, probably our easiest thing would just to be to find the position vector from D back to point O as we're drawing now on the free body diagram, and we can call that R D over O. That's going to be our easiest. So R D O is just point D minus point O, so 3.3i plus 5.71j plus 0. And finally, our force vector is going to be nothing more than negative 10 pounds in the z direction, or 10 pounds in the negative z direction, so negative 10k. So just take a moment and really look at this vector and the force, but our position vector, especially that RDO, we could have taken the position vector between O and C, excuse me, O and B, but we don't know B's coordinates. We could have taken it from D to A or from B to A, but that all just seems like a lot harder work. All right, now that we have our lambda, our position vector from a point on the line to a point on our force's line of action, and we know our force, we can now write out what the actual vector or the magnitude of the moment is going to be. And for those of you that saw it, yes, I know I put pounds for the position vector. We'll go back and correct that in just a second. Um, so let's write out our vector and the matrix for our multiplication that we're going to have. And you'll notice instead of an i, j, k, because we're dotting it with lambda, we literally write the lambda values. We do not have an i, j, k in this. And so when we multiply everything out, where we would have an i, j, or k, we have a constant, the lambda values, which is why we end up with a magnitude. We'd end up with one number from this matrix multiplication, and that's 26.4 pound feet, which is the magnitude of this moment. Now you'll see I did go back and correct our position vector is in feet. So we have feet times pounds, um, second row times are crossed with the third row. Our first row is unitless, it's a unit position vector, and this is our magnitude. And we could be done here. We could say, boom, we have the magnitude of the moment. But if we wanted to know the moment as a vector, if we wanted to know the vector of the moment or in its vector component, so we knew how much of this moment was about the x, how much was about the y, and how much about the z, then remember, all we have to do is take the actual magnitude and just multiply it by the unit position vector of the line. So we just take our lambda we already found and we come in and we multiply it by our magnitude and if we do that we would just get our 26.4 pound feet. We multiply that out by our 0.8 j plus 0.6 k and we're going to find out that in vector coordinates or Cartesian coordinates that the moment about OA not the magnitude, but the vector component moment is 21.1 in the y direction and 15.84 pound feet or foot pounds, pound feet is better, um, in the z direction. And that is how you find the moment about a line using vector notation.